Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'm sorry I can't be with you in San Francisco to give my update on natural hydrogen exploration in South Australia. Three things have really put South Australia on the global map of natural hydrogen occurrences. The first was the work of Zagonic, who in 2020 did an amazing uh, review of hydrogen occurrences around the around the globe and this drew attention to indications in Australia and in particular South Australia. Professor Isabel Moretti's work on potential fairy circles, the salt lakes on York Peninsula, Kangaroo Island, the Yulgarn and Eastern Australia attracted interest as well and then we made some regulatory changes that actually enabled us to issue licenses for explorers to target natural hydrogen. All of these have uh, drawn a lot of attention onto South Australia. I've included the Aussie base map that uh, was generated by Geognostics in 2021 to cue you into the big picture setting of uh, South Australia. The state situated between the Archean Shield of Western Australia, the West Australian Craton, and the Mobile Orogenic Belts in the Eastern States. The Gawler Craton is late Archean to early Mesoproterozoic in age, and the Kernamona Province is Paleo to Mesoproterozoic. They're the two large complex basement terrains in the state that consist of uh, mafic and felsic igneous intrusions and volcanics, moderate to high grade metamorphics. The geological record in South Australia has also preserved a unique history of sedimentation from the near Proterozoic to Ordovician and from the early Devonian to recent. So what does this mean for prospectivity for natural hydrogen? Well, We'll do a tick box exercise. Has South Australia got hydrogen indications in drill holes? Yes, they're shown in yellow dots. Have we got ancient basement complexes which contain iron and or uranium rich rocks? Yes, we do. So there's the potential to generate hydrogen via radiolytic processes and the oxidation of iron rich minerals. We've got fractured and seismically active source areas on the cratons and in the basins. And the deep seated faults can both channel the hydrogen that's being generated up and introduce water down for more chemical reactions. The sedimentary cover contains salt in places. It's also got active aqu aquifer systems. So it's got the potential to reservoir and trap migrating hydrogen. We've also got a lot of older and deep basins where you've got the possibility to decompose organic matter and over mature source rocks may also generate hydrogen. And we've got the potential for surface hydrogen seeps as well. As I've mentioned, the work that Isabel Moretti's done on potential fairy circles. So there's a number of things that tick the boxes for potential uh, hydrogen sources in South Australia. Natural hydrogen exploration and production in South Australia is regulated under the Energy Resources Act 2023. This uh, is a result of uh, updates to the old Petroleum and Geothermal Energy Act 2000. Under the legislation, uh, companies uh, can apply for a petroleum exploration licence, which is required to explore four regulated substances like natural hydrogen. The small inset map of South Australia shows granted licences in blue and applications in pink. If we have a close look at the red area, uh, the main map shows licences that we know are targeting natural hydrogen. So over 40 over-the-counter applications were lodged for petroleum exploration licences targeting natural hydrogen since February 2021. The first mover was gold hydrogen and uh, they lodged applications in February 2021. The first licence was granted to them in July 2021 and that's shown in bright yellow on York Peninsula and Kangaroo Island. The second licence was granted to H2EX in June 2022 on Air Peninsula and that's shown in solid green. 2H Resources is related to a successful petroleum explorer, Buru Energy, and uh, they're the first mover in six licence applications. The rush of 
40 applications uh, attracted uh, media attention and you can see some of the uh, headlines uh, shown uh, in the uh, slide. As I mentioned, gold hydrogen were the first mover in Australia, let alone South Australia, uh, to explore for natural hydrogen. They pulled together some disparate pieces of information. There was the work of Vacheslav Zagonik showing the indications from the Ramsey oil bore that was drilled in 1931. The work of Isabel Moretti that identified possible fairy circles. And you can see on the map, uh, the yellow dot is the location of the Ramsey oil bore. So they honed in on, on that and worked out that our regulatory changes meant they could apply to get a petroleum exploration license and explore for natural hydrogen. So the black and white photograph shows them taking the gas sample from the Ramsey oil bore. LK Ward was the chief government geologist and he's the chap with the, uh, the pipe in the photograph, I think. The, um, the gas sample was analysed at the Gasworks Laboratory. Uh, so you'd assume it was a pretty credible uh, analysis. The uh, photograph next door shows the old well site, the Ramsey uh, oil bore site, looking towards Ramsey 1. So Ramsey 1 is Australia's first natural hydrogen exploration well and it sputtered on the 11th of October. The well drilled through the early Cambrian uh, carbonates into the hilt of a sweet uh, granitic basement, reached a TD of 1,005 metres. The well uh, rig release was the 28th of October. And on the 31st of October, uh, Gold Hydrogen reported that their uh, laboratory analytical results on mud gas samples they took had recorded 73.3% hydrogen. And it backed up the 1931 data from the Ramsey oil bore. Excitingly, they also announced that helium had been detected with a content of 3.6%. So that really adds a whole new dimension to this uh, exploration program. The rig was literally moved down the road half a kilometre and Ramsey too sputtered on the 17th of November. I've got a photograph of the uh, Ramsey 2 rig in action uh, taken on the day that it uh, sputtered. H2EX were another early mover in natural hydrogen exploration in South Australia and uh, got their licence granted uh, so they could commence on-ground activity. Earlier this year, the CSIRO undertook a soil gas survey for the company and uh, it's been announced that the survey recorded natural hydrogen indications. The company's been successful in getting a federal government uh, research grant and Adelaide University is one of the research partners. The department is also uh, utilising Adelaide University expertise in researching natural hydrogen. H2EX has commenced a low impact 3D ambient noise tomography survey that's tapping into Adelaide based fleet space technologies uh, new exosphere uh, survey technology. The photograph shows the one of the satellite connected geophones that the survey is going to utilise. It's very low impact and uh, we're looking forward to seeing the results. South Australia is really well placed for natural hydrogen exploration globally. In fact, we've become a bit of a, uh, a leader. We've got our regulatory licensing investment frameworks in place and they're proven performers. We've been able to grant Australia's first exploration licenses. And 2023 has been an absolutely exciting year with on-ground exploration by Gold Hydrogen and H2EX. And Gold Hydrogen's announcement of hydrogen and helium indications in Ramsey 1 then follow up with Ramsey 2 is exciting and it's fair to say that uh, this is starting to look as though they've proven up a hydrogen source rock. Company exploration in South Australia is starting to test the diversity of natural plays. We've got a portfolio which is always a good thing. 
So look, watch this space. If you have any questions, please email me or uh, you can get more information using the QR code on the slide. Thank you very much.